Hi, I'm Jordan Quijano with Become the Banker, and I want to thank you guys for tuning right back into another series. We are going to be talking about great topics on how you can save money with your family and how you can pass this information on to not only your family members, but hopefully your friends. And I'm Joseph Quijano, Certified Financial Planner, and I want to really thank you for allowing us to be in your home tonight. And the topic tonight is one of really importance. It is how to pay for college without breaking your bank or your retirement account. To me, that is really, really important because the cost of college is really escalating, as we all know. And I believe that our young people need to have a higher education. Don't you agree, Jordan? You're absolutely right, because it's impossible for these younger generations to start to afford for this college when the cost just keep on increasing, increasing, increasing every year that we're getting older. In my generation, Jordan, yeah. going to high school and graduating was not a luxury. It was a necessity, exactly. okay? And you know, I remember my, my parents telling me, all you gotta do is go to high school and you're gonna get a good job. Today, that's not the case right now. You have to have a college degree for people and companies to hire you. I know there's companies that require not only a bachelor's degree, which is a four-year college, but now they're requiring a master's degree to be able to get that job. You're right. And but just to clarify, I mean, in nowadays you don't have to have a college education to get into a good profession or a good job nowadays. But the reality of it is, is it gets your foot in the door. It gives you the, uh, the ability to put your application on top of the list because they're going to look for the ones that have that college education versus the ones who might not have that college education. So you're absolutely right. It's important, it's very essential, but in nowadays, you don't have to do it. It's just gonna give you a lot harder time to try to find a position that pays enough money. So here's the problem that I see. And to me, the biggest problem is the cost. The cost of college, just like you said earlier, it is escalating. Right now, a public university it's charging over $20,000 a year. Think about that. In a, in a private Ivy League school, over $60,000 a year. Now, we have met people in our practice, Jordan, yep. that carry a huge amount of debt because they went to college. Of course. And you know what? They're burdened by that debt. Yes. And, and, and most people, most people, most consumers, most parents, most most of the grandparents do not know that Congress every single year allocates million, not, not millions, excuse me, billions of dollars for financial aid. So you don't have to actually pay it all yourself. The government offers what they call financial aid packages. And that can help, that really can. Mm -hmm. But I will say for some of those individuals that we have met, especially the ones that are in the Ivy Leagues, the doctors, the ones that have the high professions. The reality of it is, is they're carrying their student loan debt for the rest of their life. I've seen doctors have over $400,000 in student loans. I mean, that's as much as a mortgage that they're never gonna pay off that they're still making payments on every single month just to get ahead a little bit. Not only are there those loan programs that you could get for financial aid to help your students, but there's also for doctors, teachers, individuals that already have loans in place that, the, that there's programs that you can take a part of that give you loan forgiveness plans. And this is something that you should really look into because like I said, for families, when I walk in daily and I see a doctor who has over $400,000 in debt, my goodness, that's gonna take a lifetime and a half to pay off. And that, that to me hurts to because that's somebody that's saving our lives, but yet we're asking for a lot of money from them. You know, I totally understand that. And as parents, we really have a dilemma. We as parents have a dilemma. We want to help our children go to 
higher education, go to college, get a bachelor's degree, get a master's degree. Some people want to get a PhD degree. Parents, we want to make sure that our children will do better than us, right? right? That's a whole intent. However, though, they have a dilemma because they usually tap into their retirement accounts to pay for college. Yeah. And, and that's, that is a tremendous, tremendous mistake because normally they would pay a 10% penalty to get money out of there and they will be taxed and they would lose over 30% of that money. I'm going to share tonight how you can really pay for college with a break in your bank, your retirement bank that is, because see, the government actually allocates billions of dollars in financial aid, but getting that money, getting that money takes a lot of effort and knowledge. And this is what we're really good at. We can help you navigate through the complexity of the financial aid system. Parents, Jordan, most parents yep. are totally confused because the financial aid system has many acronyms like COC. What is that? Cost of college. Right. EFC, expected family contribution. What is that? Yep. I'm gonna break it down for you in simple terms, okay? Yes. All right, so, okay, to qualify for financial aid, you know, and, and to really navigate through the financial aid system, it all begins with a very complicated form. And this form is called a FAFSA. Now this form, I'm gonna tell you something right now, I have had attorneys and CPAs that have actually hired me to help them complete the form. That is how difficult it is. It's because if you make one mistake, Yes. If you make only one tiny mistake on that form, guess what? You're going to be disqualified for financial aid. You lose out on all the money that you could possibly use for your children's education. So you're absolutely right. Right. And uh, so it all begins with a financial aid form and they're going to basically undress you financially. Basically, that is a term I want to use. Yeah. You know, you and your spouse and the child. You're gonna have, to, they, they wanna find out how much money you're making, how many assets you have, you know, how many children in your family. I mean, you have to disclose everything on that form. And then they'll do a calculation. And the calculation will take into account the cost of college. So let me give you an example here, okay? The cost of college, let's say that you go to college and uh, you want to go to uh, a local college up here, a state college, and the cost of college is $20,000 a year. $20,000 a year, okay? Because you completed the FAFSA form or the financial aid form, the government has a formula. It's called the EFC, the Expected Family Contribution. Yep. And they will calculate how much money, you know, you are going to have to pay out of pocket as a parent or grandparent, right? So you got that cost of college, 20,000. Let's say that the EFC was 10,000. Yeah. So the balance is 10,000. That should be financial aid. Yes. But let's assume that you guys have a lot of assets and a lot of income. Mm -hmm. And the expected family contribution now is actually zero, right? That could be a doctor, right. a lawyer. It could be zero. Who's making a lot of money, but still has the regular financial family problems of loans. Sure. Maybe people in hospitals that they have to pay for, health care for their parents, and they have all these bills. Sure. But at the end of the day, that financial form doesn't take into account that. That is right, but Jordan. You know, there's no mercy on that. There is no mercy. So, so let's say that the cost of college on this second example is 20000 the expected family contribution for this family that is doing really well financially is zero. So that means that there's no financial aid. That means that everything will have to come out of your pocket. Yeah. Okay, and this is when parents begin to break their piggy bank, their retirement account. Yeah. And that is the worst mistake they can make because I'm gonna share with you, we are going to share with you a method, a method that will help you pay for college and also get financial aid that you deserve.
So when we're talking about this kind of money coming out of your retirement pockets or anywhere else, it's, it's expensive. CNBC put a statistic out that in the last 10 years, college expenses have increased by 25%. Are you kidding me? 25% has increased in college tuition and fees and books. So this is why it's so important for you to hear us out and listen to the real true solution on how you can make your money work for you and not only do that, but hide your money from those FAFSA forms so that you can get the best financial aid possible. We're gonna be showing you a revolutionary concept that will help you pay not only for college, but actually enhance your retirement account. So I wanna be sure that you tune in next yep. week, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I really, really, really appreciate you guys leaving the comments. Give us that notification bell and please leave us a like because we love the comments that you're putting down there. We keep on answering every comment you're leaving us. And I really, really appreciate you guys giving us the time of your day to really put us forward. So I'm Jordan Quijano. And I'm Joseph Quijano. Thank you again for watching our channel. We'll see you next week.